Right. Okay, folks, it's 4 o'clock. Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, meeting of the uh, Howard's Golf Committee for the month of May, uh, Tuesday, May 17th. This is a hybrid meeting uh, as such. Uh, Paul, nice to have you aboard. Present. Yeah, thank you very much for taking time. And uh, I've got, can you read that, Roman? I can't. Steve. No, there's two other participants. Dave Wilson and Leo Heffernan. Oh. Uh, Leo and Dave, thank you for, uh, you know, joining us. And uh, our invited guest, uh, Roman Greer. Uh, is there any public comment at this time that's specific to the agenda? If not so, uh, I'd like to proceed to the consent agenda. I'd entertain a motion to approve the uh, April minutes. So moved. so moved and seconded by uh, Paul, uh, Steve Bellotta. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Okay, we're going to move right to the uh, director's report. And uh, thanks to uh, Roman's uh, creativity, we've got another uh, very nice PowerPoint presentation to uh, look at. So, Roman? The yeah, floor um, is yours. And Steve and Paul, you should have received the PowerPoint by email, so you can follow along if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first thing um, that I put on here was the what was approved at town meeting, which was um, our article on the golf design and feasibility study, which was Article 38. That was approved. I, I put all the language in here. We don't need to read through it. But, um, uh, Clem, it was an idea I had that if you wanted to, um, uh, for next committee meeting's agenda, um, I found it very helpful when I had uh, John and John, um, I'm sorry, um, John Wheeler John. And, and John Crook uh, help yep. with the cart as right. a task force. If you wanted to um, appoint or a task force to help with the um, RFP on this, that'd be very helpful. I think it'd be, it'd be great to have the committee involvement. Yeah, I think that's a, a perfect opportunity. Uh, folks, what I'll do is uh, we'll shop that out to you and you can communicate to me if you're interested in participating, okay? And that way, it'll just expedite things we can get. Yeah. You know, the language of the RFP in place, make sure that we've got all the bases covered. It'll take a little of the uh, onus off of Roman. Okay? I do have a question. Yes. Yeah. And it concerns the grants that exist for mm -hmm. building of a youth specific player development area. Right. So, what, what, question I have is if we're looking for grants that do that and it says youth specific does that exclude the other people that were included in the article no no so it just as long from what my understanding not at all uh, just as long as it's an area that is available to like our first tee program we, we would shop it out and say um, this is going to be a wonderful uh, place for our first tee program but as you know the first tee only runs certain hours and, and certain days, so it would be available um, to general public, members, whoever, um, at other times. Yeah. Okay, and that's great. I just I feel that if it is only youth specific, then as a, an area that we're doing, that it, it doesn't make that much sense to I me. I agree, because there's yeah. so yeah. few hours in the day we have youth there. So Terrific. Yeah. yeah, I agree, yeah. I agree totally. Anyway. And I think the other, oh, the other point that was to balance the focus on the junior course was the, the putting complex, as I indicated, uh, you know, historically where they exist. I mean, you've got people from all walks of life, all ages, and age groups rep represented uh, in that particular activity. So, you know, I, I think it's a strong selling point, especially if we ever get to that point of Perhaps uh, creating a, a, a nonprofit to help, you know, create a funding mechanism for this yeah. project. When we first looked into this in 2019, and, and we started going through the PGA for the feasibility study, a lot of um, other ideas were um, explored. So, like uh, adaptive golf for people that um, have injuries or have handicaps, like designing it specific for that, so we could run programs like that there. And also maybe um, charging more for the instructional license because it could be an area um, that the instructor could um, could uh, reserve to do on-course instruction, which they can't currently do. 
Roman, just what, what do you expect from the feasibility study? So, uh, you know, we started this very slowly in 2019 when this was first going to be going to town meeting and it got nixed from the, the um, warrant. Um, so, I, you know, the architect, we'll have to look into that. And I, I think I'd appreciate help when designing the RFP when looking into this because the architects normally don't uh, do feasibility studies. So if we inv in, involve just simply an architect, um, they won't do the feasibility side of it, but the PGA did it for free for us before, at least we, we began that. And so uh, it was basically dealing with um, um, player development specialists within the PGA. And then as far as the architect goes, I think when we design the RFP, we're gonna really wanna focus on uh, low cost maintenance. You know, um, because it's not going to be a revenue generator. So we would want to build it so that it was, um, whether it was a putting complex or a three-hole uh, course, build it so that it's, uh, it's got lower than usual maintenance uh, costs. Why can't it be a revenue generator? Okay, well, it could be. I, I think, I think well, well, let's look into it. But um, if it is strictly, as we um, started looking into, a three-hole like practice or junior course that's in the woods between holes 14 and 18. That's what we were first looking at. Um, I, there, there wouldn't be a whole lot of money you could charge, I, I don't think, for three holes. That's such a limited, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd, what I'd like to see it as, and I think we could uh, explore this, is reserve it for certain times when our junior programs are running. Other than that, have it as a first come, first serve members. You know, when members don't get tea times, they just help them, they go down and maybe an old school line of a ball in the rack and go, go play some practice holes. I'm, I'm not sure, I, I think that's what we'll yeah. have to and it, and um, uh, explore. But, and could, but couldn't it be uh, similar to the range pass? Yeah, it could be, Yeah, it could be. It could be concluded with a range pass. And I think <laughs> the great aspect of it could be potentially too, it, it takes pressure off the existing 18 holes. Yeah. And I think it's worthy as a side note, because it is somewhat humorous, in the town of Harwich, being that it's small, and rumor and innuendo get out there, like many places, could you share with us, Roman, that yeah. cautionary tale <laughs> that this really happened? You probably won't believe it, but... Well, no, it's funny that uh, I was telling Clem, after the second night of town meeting, <laughs> I went and I had to open the golf course the next morning, and it was a morning where we had sweeps on the golf course, and like the first sweeps group, they, they all yelled and called me over, hey, quick, come here, come here, come here. I heard the town meeting uh, voted to close the 17th, uh, close the 14th hole and, and create a three-hole junior course on the 14th hole. So what, we're only going to have 17, <laughs> we only have a 17-hole golf course now. <laughs> and they were adamant that that's what town meeting voted You on. can't make these things up. <laughs> we're closing the 14th. Thank you for sharing, Roman. Sure. Unbel so, unbelievable. I but anyway, I, th I think a, a committee task force would be very helpful yeah, on, on yeah. design. So the feasibility study piece of it will include the financials. Yeah, I, I hope. Well, let's let's design the RFP. I hope so. I, I'm I'm hoping to engage the committee to to begin that process. So I, we're in, we're in the infancy start of that process. So, but um, it, it, just a question: is is it a given that it's going to occur? Because if you're designing an RFP, it assumes that you're already decided that it's going to occur and a, to me a feasibility study says is it realistic right to do? so so all that's been approved is is the design and feasibility yeah so I, I think let's get the design the feasibility and then what I'm hoping to do it, um, is is get it designed and um, and then shop it around to the grants and and see, and see if some of these wonderful grants will will will, will build it <coughs> so I, I think I think the building of it is is definitely up in the air, but the, um, the the design is critical to getting to seeking grants. You know, Roman, that is a major. I I don't know if you <clears throat> are aware of the hours um, that it takes to put together a proposal sure. to present to a foundation. Um, it I is. I'm not Major. sure. The one thing I, I did, so I have spoken with the Links Across America Foundation, and they said this is exactly the project that they pursue because they, they pursue projects associated with the first T. And so they were very engaging when I spoke with them. And they said, let us know when you have it designed, and, and, and we'll walk you through the presentation process. What's and the that Links Across America, I, it, it's, a, um, it's a foundation uh, that's um, 
of, uh, of companies that build golf courses. So, so they have all the resources. To, and if they approve your project, they come in and build it. Anyway, I, th I think it, we're, we're very early on. I don't want to ask, act like I've moved anywhere beyond what you see in front of me here. Yeah, I just think we need to cover all the bases because I've been involved in nonprofits raising money, and I know the work and the hours and the professionalism of presenting it's a challenge. is major. <clears throat> yeah, it's a challenge. Well, good. Well, we've got this. So this has been approved. So, you know, if, if we get some, I'd like to have some committee involvement right. in, in preparing an RFP and, and, and the scope of the project. Okay, next slide is discussing tournaments. Um, as you'll see, we've had a few tournaments already. We had the Mass Golf Spring Team for 30 golfers. Uh, the Harwich Fire Association and Bobby J Memorial Tournament was huge, 132 golfers. We actually had them capped at 120 and they begged us for three more spots because they were, they were so oversubscribed and, and we conceded to that because uh, we'd had a lot of 40 degree and cold days that we wanted to make up on some green fees for. So uh, 132 golfers there. And then uh, just yesterday was a military golf association event, 40 veterans, and I'll cover that more under that um, agenda item. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, um, back to the Howitch fire. Uh, boy, that was terrific, Roman. Was, was there food involved? Yes, yeah, so they, they um, this was a point of contention with the new restaurant, uh, but they, they um, uh, chose to get have it catered, and they discussed that with uh, the restaurant. The restaurant, that was their opening day. Yeah. And, and uh, the restaurant chose to um, allow them to have it catered and not go through them. They would have liked the business, but uh, a deposit had already been made by the fire association I got because it. they knew that yeah. things were up in the air with the restaurant. And yeah. so uh, they had to cater, which was a shame. They, they, they committed to going through the restaurant next year. Yeah. But the SMGA yesterday had a buffet. So that, that was the restaurant's first buffet. And um, it, it was a big success. Excellent. I, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, we played just after the, mm -hmm. and they, the course was Im impeccable. Mm -hmm. They must have, and there were some hackers and there were some great golfers, but we got onto the greens. There were very few ball marks on the green. They, uh, they must have replaced all of their divots. I, I thought they did a terrific job. Wonderful to hear, because um, that's a lot, a lot when, when you see these golfers showing up for these charity events, you see a lot of clubs you've seen, these bags of clubs you've seen yard sales. I mean, people that just don't play very much. <laughs> And, and uh, that's good to hear. That's great feedback. I also got that same feedback from Sean because I asked him the next morning what he saw on the golf course. And he said, ah, a lot of, a lot of full garbage cans, but uh, not, not, <laughs> not damage to the course. So upcoming, what we have is... Uh, uh, the fire uh, tournament that was being referred to by Carol, or was it the other one? Yep, that, that's the Harwich Fire Association. Thank you. You're welcome. So upcoming, we have the Cranberry Valley Member Member Tournament on uh, this Thursday, which has, we, uh, we have a full field of 100 golfers. Wow. And uh, they'll have lunch in the restaurant um, as well. Um, on the 9th of June, we're gonna have the Harwich Chamber, as, which the committee approved, obviously the committee approved all these. Um, the Women's Golf Association 18 hole Member Member on the 14th of June. Uh, the NEPGA Junior Tour. The Women's Nine Hole Invitational. And, uh, and the Women's Golf League of Cape Cod, all coming up in June. You'll see on here, we do have a couple canceled events. The Harwich Police Association canceled their event. They're not as motivated as the Fire Association. They, they, can't, they stopped running the event during COVID and they just don't have the enthusiasm to pick it up. I, I put the kind of a save the date because right, uh, right. In, in the fall, they weren't right. committed totally to that date, which you approved. But um, uh, I, I spoke with them in April, and they chose to pass on it. They, they chose to pass this year. And then the drive, chip, and putt. I, I was really sorry to see this, but the New England PGA um, um, dropped our drive, chip, and putt qualifier this year also um, because of the lack of funding um, because they are hosting the regional event for that tournament. And they said because of that, the PGA nationally asked them to drop one event. And so there, it's a shame there will not be a drive, chip, and putt uh, qualifier on Cape this year. Which is a shame. Right. It's that's, not, a, that's a shame. But they committed to coming back next year. They did. Yeah, they did. Uh, but like any Harwich kids in our <coughs> programs are going to have to travel to the Bay Club, which is the nearest uh, location, which is really a shame. What kind of investment is involved? 
Well, it's it's not it's not great, John. But I, I think the budget is really small. What they do is they have tea gifts for all the kids, and then they they have um, they pay interns to run the events. It's really really small. I just think the PGA nationally said um, to, to run the um, to run the regional event is a little bit more. They, they put a little bit more into the regional, and so because they have to run the regional, that 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 put a clamp on on their um, qualifiers. Is what they told me. But I, I, I was um, I was disappointed to hear that. Um, moving on. So the new app for the golf course. Uh, I'm going to announce it to the members via email on uh, Thursday on Friday. Uh, this is available right now. It, it's through Golf Logic. It, it's the most popular app in golf, and, and it really brings a lot of good uh, um, advantages to the golf course and to the golfer. Um, th this uh, um, starting tomorrow, our, G our GPS on our golf carts are going to have this, the new topography map of the green. So that's a brand new enhancement that's coming out tomorrow. Wow. It'll be automatically updated overnight, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and the app will be available. Um, it, it is currently available to our members and, and anybody that wants to use it. It's a free app, and then uh, you can purchase a, a membership uh, to gain like next level content, so, such as like 3D rendering and such. Um, but on Friday, I'm, I'm going to have our, um, our golf cart sales rep, Alex, is going to come by and he's going to bring a lot of promotional material, including like stickers with QR codes that we're going to put on the starter house. So people, if they want to download the app, they can just snap a picture oh, wow. and automatically get the app. Yeah. So um, that is going to be very easy. That was my question. Have, have you people seen this Golf Logic system? I have it system? on my, yeah. downloaded it on my app. If there's such a thing as too much information, I mean, the contours of the greens, it's... And the carts yeah. will have this as well, Roman? So the carts are going to have this, yes. Yeah. The, and the carts have what um, is, the, um, is really the pay version of it, is the carts have the enhanced version of it. Yeah, you know, we have a, uh, a tournament up there that can qualify that we have scheduled for August, I think. Right. Can we shut that off yes. on the carts? Yeah, we can disable it. And That's... That's great news. Yeah, and, and I mean, news. the carts as a whole are very well received. Uh, and yeah. then now that they're rolling out these, um, these next level enhancements, it, it's going to be really good. And this is going to allow you to see walkers as well as carts. It does. So, so, yeah, um, so we see the mobile users on our, on our uh, management screen. Assuming, they, assuming they've enabled it, right? Yes, assuming. exactly. Yep. And then a few odds and ends. Um, uh, Jake's at Cranberry Valley opened last Friday, um, the 13th. Uh, their liquor license was approved a few weeks ago by the town. They're awaiting uh, state approval. And, and they, 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 they seem to think that they have some pretty good connections at the state level. They're expecting liquor license this week, so that they, they, which normally takes a month. So yeah, we'll see. Um, food, and then uh, also through the GPS, um, we're going to have the ability to do food orders uh, through the GPS. I'm working with the restaurant, and that's why our sales rep, Alex, is coming down on Friday, because he's going to work with um, us in the pro shop and the restaurant to get, a, get some menu items uh, uploaded to the uh, golf cart GPS. And then uh, um, the Mark Mungum T distance recommendation is expected on May by May 24th. Um, Mark, let me know that that is in the works and to expect it by that date. Um, I put on here state, uh, I'm sorry, staff, COVID, and injury. So we've had a little, um, we've been a little hot spot for COVID on staff. And I, I just want to mention that because if, if anybody's noticed, I was a little understaffed. We've had seven cases of COVID in the last month on our staff. And it's really been put a lot of stress on, on things. It, it's funny to, um, um, just in managing the staff to see how many, you know, we're following the state's, uh, uh, the, the health department's guidance on exactly when to return to work, how to return to work. But it's really put a lot of stress on each individual employee of, uh, you know, do you believe in the guidance or not? Do you want to work with this person or not? I mean, so that's been very difficult. It's, has so, it been maintenance side or pro shop? All sides. All sides. Yeah. We've got in the pro shop, maintenance, and the uh, carts. Um, and then uh, as, when I put an injury, we did have an injury to one of our, um, our uh, uh, golf course maintenance uh, um, people. I won't, I won't name names, but um, uh, he fell off a mower, a little two-foot fall, but it was a serious injury. He, he uh, broke many bones and punctured a lung. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. And so, um, so I've been going through um, what happens after this. I've been going through a lot of safety training. 
and we've been investigated by the state. Uh, just yesterday, Sean and I invited in the um, inspectors, and really, we opened the doors to them and said, please, uh, you know, not, not just to discuss the accident, but we said, you know, here, here's what we were dealing with. Please give recommendations, which they, they were, it was a really positive meeting, and, uh, and uh, they're gonna create a report um, that then we're gonna take to the, to the uh, town's insurance company, Maya, and work with a safety um, um, expert there um, to help implement the recommendations, to help just make the workplace safer. But this was really a, a freak accident. But well, I mean, there's little things that, that when I discussed with the um, investigators, you know, it could just be the simply um, something we don't do, which is um, um, making people wear a certain type of shoe. You know, it's something simple as that. And that, that may be, it, it turns out that may be the recommendation that we get is that it was kind of a wet day. Or, or it could be something more heavy handed, which is when it's raining, we're not allowed to mow. And so a lot of mornings we go out and mow in the morning when it's light rain, uh, they, they may they may, um, they may recommend that we cease mowing operations in the rain. So I, c I could see recommendations too that would include some some type of headgear. I don't know about you guys, but I know it's remote. A guy on a mower that's out wherever, but you wouldn't want to hit him. Yeah. In the, in the same respect. Or at so least have I, a net behind the some of. I mean, a lot of the mowers don't even have nets behind them, do they? Well, they all have hard hats. Every every member of the staff has a hard hat, okay. and we've been, I mean, we we we've right. we've left it up to them to wear them. So yeah. the, everyone yeah. has a has a fluorescent vest and a hard hat, and this may be a, a, this may have been an event that Good. kick starts yeah. you guys seeing them out there in vests and hard hats. We'll see. Um, and then um, the golf cart other carts feature. Uh, Steve, uh, this was a response to a question you asked. You were asking uh, last month if uh, the carts had the ability to show other golf carts on the golf course. This is something that, that, that um, Pace Technologies is rolling out like as we speak. On Friday, um, we're going to work on implementing, uh, wow. implementing exactly that. What they offer is not um, seeing the other golf carts. It's, it's actually like a specific uh, geofence that will tell you when, when the carts ahead of you have moved out of the hitting zone, out of the danger zone. So we'll set it up for a couple of holes that have blind shots, such as 12 and the second shot on 18. 18. And, yeah. and, and, we'll, uh, and we'll have these certain geofences set up so that um, it'll tell the, go the golfers in the golf carts when the carts ahead of them have left the uh, danger zone. That has great insurance implications. Excellent. And, that, and that'd be a double layer of protection because we already have it. What's seat? Yeah. How many times do you see people get in their cars and drive up around the blind spot to see anybody yeah, there? Exactly. Just to see that they've gone and then it has to turn around and drive back before they get their next shot. Yeah, that's what they, we hope they do instead of just uh, hitting and hoping they don't hit somebody. But yeah, that, that is a pace of play issue. Yeah. Yeah. Is this part of the golf logic pack? Yeah, uh, so this is the PACE technology package um, that's on the golf carts. Uh, so it'll, um, and what I'm going to find out, which I don't know yet, is if, they're, um, if the mobile users uh, will appear as well. But I, but I believe it will. I have a question. Um, so I did take a cart, and I had handicap access. Mm -hmm. uh, Martha had a cart, did not. But... There was a ring, and we, I was told there's a ring, and then if you proceed beyond the ring, then it will ask you to back up. Mine and, well, mine rang, but immediately was told to back up. So it didn't give you that little heads up, and there's nothing on the ground. So you end up suddenly in the wrong place and don't know it. Okay. Um that wasn't all day. Was that on a particular hole? That was on a particular hole. Okay. Because we're constantly tuning these up. So those are geofences that we set up, and one's in yellow. That's the warning area. And then one, then the next one is the one that shuts it down. It's a red, red zone, so it shuts down the cart. So that particular hole, we may have, um, um, may, may have too small of a um, warning area. Well, so. where is the warning? Is it on, on the screen? Or... Well, so when you're driving the car, you should see outlines of where the um, where where the geofences are, just like very light outlines. I, I didn't know this. Okay. I didn't know this. All right. Well, um, it it's was interesting today, Roman. I had a car, mm -hmm. 
I was on 60 on the, gr on the green. Okay. And my cart was on the car path. And I couldn't go forward. Okay. And I couldn't go backwards. And I thought it was dead. And okay. I kept trying and, you know. And then one of the ladies said, you know, Martha, if you back up all the way down the golf cart path, the cement, and cross the line before the green, it will switch, it will change. So I, I did that. I went all the way backwards, finally. And then I could go forward. So th that's the kind of thing we're tuning up. So we'll always, every time there's a, a violation, we see it. So that it considers that a violation. What happens is um, the, the golf cart geofences have a plus or minus of six feet. We're trying to keep them away from the cart paths, obviously. But they, they can kind of, if they're close, they can kind of grab a cart path. And then we don't want that. So we're, any feedback like that, we're, we're tuning them back up okay. to move the, move the fence. You can always back the cart up. So, so if you back up, like, like your friend said, Back it up to a point where then yeah. it, it, it unlocks. Yeah. But um. But, but yeah. there was a time while I was doing this that I couldn't go backwards okay. and I couldn't go forward. So All right. It well, just, you know. The one good thing I'll say is um is we are um. I thought it was dead. Yeah, sure. I I can imagine you would. Um, the good thing we're seeing out of these golf carts is a lot less, we're tuning up the geofences, we're seeing a lot less violations each day. When we first started sending them out, we were learning a lot about the geofences we set up, that we set them up too close to cart paths, too close to areas. And, and so, um, you know, if you have a situation like that on hole 16, I'll take a look at 16, but if you have any other situations like that, just let us know in the pro shop and, and we'll, we'll take a look. And it's just a matter of us going in and, and moving the geofence a little bit. Well, a quick question on yes. the uh, charging on the golf cart. So yeah. are you happy with that? Very, very happy. Yeah. Does that mean like, what other people have tried for the last three or six holes? Oh yeah, they're fantastic. So when you know, I was I was uh, checking these the other day, or, or actually just this morning, the nine hole carts that came off the golf course. I still had an 89% charge. Wow. And so, and, and we're seeing cards that go off for 18 holes have well over 50% um, yeah. charge left, so like six, in the 60%. So yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, we have not had one die yet. So, um, so and we've sent uh, cards out for 36 holes multiple times. How long does it take the charger from? You know what's cool. You know what's cool, Steve, is um, like when when I spot charged these this morning that came off the golf course. I, I was just checking that. It's pretty cool to see that when you when you plug it in. So I, I plugged it in when it said it was 89% charged, and and the, um, the the GPS screen will tell you. I think it was like 44 minutes to full charge. So, um, yeah, I, I think they're they're charging in four hours. That's what the, the the sales pitch was at first was four straight hours. But but like again, um, um, the spot charging is fantastic, where we can bring them off the course and pull plug them in and get them back to 100% and then send them back out. <coughs> They are. I, I think it's true. Going away. You know, so uh, the, some of them have, and um, you know, we're doing a favor to our to our golf cart partners. They just don't have room on their lot, so they're, they're sl slowly getting rid of them. Uh, they, they they picked up two loads of them last week, and we still have probably 15 cars yeah. there. But the, uh, they are going away. Those are the old ones. Still no, the old ones that are down yeah. off the yeah. left is 14. Yeah. 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 Um, it's kind of funny to look at them and see, like, wow, we used to ride those. <laughs> okay. um, they got you from A to B. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay, the Chronicle. I, I've talked to um, Bill Galvin from the Chronicle. He's interested in doing an article on the cart barn and the green initiative of the town. So, um, you know, Clem, I'd, yep. I'd, I'd invite you to at least for some quotes to sit down with Bill. And, and, and if any committee yeah. members, I'm sure he's going to want to step out and talk to on the random golfers that are on the course that day and get some quotes about the golf carts, but that's upcoming. And then uh, if you want, if you watch any of the Comcast or Xfinity platforms, keep an eye out for our new player development commercial that's out. Um, so it's, a, it's something we've wanted to do for a number of years. It's, it's something that, um, that sends people to our website to sign up for lessons, sign up for first tee, sign up for golf pro improvement programs. We haven't had a specific commercial for golf improvement programs in a while. And, and uh, as I told Bob Miller, he's, uh, he's heavily featured um, in the commercial. They, 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 they did a lot of video of him giving clinics and lessons. And then uh, there's also video from our drive, chip, and putt day. It's a really, really yeah. good commercial. Yeah. 
And so that, that'll be the second one we have in rotation. We also have just a, a general, yeah. um, go to our website too, Secure Tea Times commercial. Just a general comment, uh, when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, because I was able to stream some of the national tournaments and so on, it was interesting to see the Cranberry Valley commercials. Oh, you saw them? Yeah, well placed even there, so. Yeah, yeah, good. I mean, yeah, good. I, it's, it's pretty impressive. And then um, I did an annual pass an analysis just um, by date, and I, I emailed this to everybody. Yeah. Annual pass sales look really good. Uh, we're, we're, we're exceeding last year, which was an all-time high, but not, not tremendously. We'll see how they come in. Um, there were, were a few interesting numbers on the annual pass um, about, um, comparison. You know, when, when you look at the Chatham numbers, when we started uh, increasing their rate, they, they, they just keep, they come more and more. The more we raise the rate, the more they come. So I think we should keep going. <laughs> <laughs> money, but, is, um, money is no larger. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, and then East Ham and Orleans, for some, for some reason, we're really, uh, um, we, met, we have right at this point in time, or as of the 10th, more East Ham and Orleans members than we've ever had. Wow. And wow. so um, it's just interesting. But uh, we're on pace to at least match what we had last year and probably slightly exceed. So right now yep. we're at 708 and 205 for getting big? Yep, so uh, if you look all the way on the right, so, so the, the total is 1110, right. uh, but 708 from Harwich and 205. But then, uh, you know, it's also neat to see, uh, you know, th these are int interesting numbers when you, when you separate out um, the, new, uh, the new categories. You know, we have, we have about just under 100 new Harwich members every year, and then we lose it. We a bunch of age out, a bunch go to other golf courses. So it's funny to see that you know 94 brand new Harwich resident members seems like a big number, but it's only six over what we had last year. And, wow. and those numbers stay yeah. pretty consistent. We just we always have a lot of a lot of new people coming through. And sales basically go through July 4th. So um, yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. But um, from this point on, um, well, not we're, we're, they're going to go for a few more weeks, probably till Memorial Day for full memberships. But after that, what we see a lot of are the summer people just getting uh, collegiate memberships and junior memberships. So so you know, as, as we get more into the summer, it, it, it's more into those uh, uh, lesser categories, um, money wise. But um, as people are still returning from Florida, we're still doing doing um, a small amount, a, a few a day. And um, that's all I have for you. Okay, great. I have a, a couple of questions. One is when I drove up to drop off my clubs, knowing I was going to take a cart, mm -hmm. the, our configuration of that process seems pretty awkward because I dropped off the clubs and then I have to walk somewhere else to go get a cart and then I have to come all the way back around to get the cart and then I have to go back and pay and I didn't know if you were working on a, a smoother transition from drop off to cart. Yeah, so we are, uh, the one thing that I include in, in the emails that I send to members is, is um, for, for members we normally have uh, go, uh, um, golf carts parked in front of the cart barn. And so I, what I'd recommend is you, is you park in the parking lot near the cart barn and then you can just take one of those carts that's right there and, uh, and, um, and drive it over to your car and, and load up there and then drive it right up to the starter house and check sure, it. Sure, we did that last year. They weren't there this year and I didn't okay. know if, yeah, if they you were. Up today. In the morning, oh, in the oh, morning we always morning. load that area. Yeah, and, and uh, if, if, when you played the other day, I mean, when I saw you, it was a chaotic time. It was right after the fire <laughs> fight. Right. So, so yeah, the, the, that, at that point, we didn't have them. But every morning, we have them out there. And then throughout the day, we normally do. So that, that's an easy way for the members to do it. Also, what we try to do is, um, is load up, um, have a couple carts at, at the bag drop. And then when you get right past, past those planters there in our cart stadium, here, we try to have some right close to that. So it would be a very easy transition onto the carts. But in order to load up that area with a lot of carts, we, we drive them forward. And so if people have been coming and taking the, car, the most recent carts, yeah, it, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit of a walk. But um, you can always grab a golf cart and bring it back to the bag drop and, and, and you know, so you don't have to ever carry your clubs. And then uh, one thing that, that um, we are learning as, as we do this, you know, and, and I'm starting to train the staff a little bit with this. We, we, we were very focused um, 
when we first started on, uh, you got to tell us your cart number, you got to tell us your cart number, and, and putting the onus on the customer to tell us the cart number. And we're starting to learn that we really don't need that to be the case. Our, our staff can grab the cart numbers and communicate that. So we're, 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 we're starting to back off and putting the onus on the members and saying, oh, oh what, what cart number are you? Come back and tell me your cart number, because that, that was, that's a bulky process, and it's not necessary. So um, our, our staff are starting to handle that more. Um, my, my next question was, um, are you looking into improving our website uh, at all this year? Um, I, I've done some improvements to it already, but we're, it's, it's constantly in motion. Uh, well, what, do you, what do you see that... Um... Well, um, access to the women's and men's league information, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist. And we have a lot of um, advertisement. Um, it doesn't seem as if we can easily get through some of our pieces. Some much better, but we seem to have a lot of stuff that isn't really important. Sure. The one, one thing I would say, Carol, is, and I, I've been having a discussion with the um, Women's Golf Association on this one, um, is that um, what we're discussing is uploading the link to the website of the Women's Association has all those documents on the Golf Genius and having that be a central point that the Men's Association have that also where, where the league info is all on Golf Genius because everybody has the login for the golf that's in the league has login for the Golf Genius <coughs> and so that could be a, a central location um, uh, for, for all those documents. So why does it have to be on Golf Genius when it could be in our website? Well, it, you know, really, um, it's just a link. So um, if, if, it's a, if it's just linking the Women's so, Nine Hole Golf Association, we, we could put that under member resources. We're, we're in the middle of discussing that right now. Um, but, you know, I'm trying not to weigh down the um, website too much with, because the previous website we had, we discussed this at the committee level at the time, really became um, a collage because so much had been uploaded to it. It really wasn't a very good marketing tool for the golf course. So. Um, you know, we have that member resources tab. We can put anything that's helpful under the member resources tab, including you know, a link to the, because you know, the fact that the Women's Association has um, all of their, their documents on a web page that they manage, it's very easy just to have them manage their own website and just put a link. We, we can always put the link there. Okay, so if the link is there, we can still click, we can go right to click the link Valley. And, and, yeah. The link will be there. We get our information. Yeah. And the men can do the same thing. I yeah, the men do that through Golf Genius. Yeah. No, we do, we do it through Golf Genius. But I, the, the website that the women are using is, is going to go away, uh, Carol. It, I think it already did go. Did no, it already it go, go away? away. But yeah. no, we've been paying for it for X number of years. The, the, we, I say we, the Men's Association. And it's you know, three or four hundred dollars a year, or to, u to use that website. So we we've moved all our information onto Golf Genius. Everyone they can get all the documents about you know, pace of play, uh, local rules, all that stuff on Golf Genius. They just they have one repository that they can go to for all the. Uh, and I've been talking to Sori about uh, doing the same for the woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Everyone goes to the Golf Genius for the results of the tournaments. And if they need any other information, you know, why not, why not put it all on that, on that website? It's, it's very easy to put documents on that website. And, um, you know, then you don't have, you're not dependent upon, you know, Chasing Roman or Mike or whoever is putting that information up. To me, as long as, you know, assuming Dickel, I mean, Sori has like five documents that, that she is interested in having available mm -hmm. to the membership. And I, I think that's a perfect um, repository for those documents. <coughs> so I that's... Think Sorry was looking at Yeah, I've been, I've been in discussions with Sori yeah. because I've been the one that's been really doing the stuff on the website for the, for the women's group. Um, and, and, and to me, I mean, I, I'll still do it, but when we're, I think our contract expires in next year, so we're going to phase it out completely. Um, but because um, we don't use it at all now, I mean, we all everything we have, the men's group, is on the Golf Genius website. 
And the Golf Genius will be more natural place than the actual website because it doesn't, you know, if it's strictly information for league players, um, it, it's not it, it's not needed um, by everybody. So you know, everybody that plays in the league, they all have the Golf Genius ID and login. So. You know, we, I mean, I think it'd be confusing to have all the men's documents, all the women's, all in the nine holers. So I think having their own um, documents uploaded to Golf Genius is a natural, and it's easy. Okay, so are you saying that the, the link on the website will take you to Golf Genius, or you have to be able to go into your Golf Genius yeah. on your phone, or? Yeah, into your own Golf Genius. I mean, so, so that's what the men, men have, is, is all their documents are on Golf Genius. So. I mean, if if um, if there was a link to General Golf Genius, we, we could easily do that on the website to say here's a link to Golf Genius, but it wouldn't be um, wouldn't wouldn't be much of a help. I don't think. I, I think it'd be easy just to go to Golf Genius yourself and put in your Golf Genius ID. But I, I, again, I know Jack's been in those discussions with Sorry IF also, and that, that's been a topic lately. Is is um because their previous link was on the old app, and and, and so they wanted to find out where where to put their new link. New documents. Thank you. Is it money involved with uh, Golf Genius? Yes. Money, monetary? Yes. Yeah, I, ro I mean, yeah. Roman is unfortunately yeah, we, we pay. paying for that. Yeah, we, we pay for the premium package of it. Oh, great. Great. Okay. Um, it's all set. set. Yeah. Right. Uh, I Very just have one little point. Uh, How did your visit with the budget? Uh, very well. Um, uh, we didn't talk a whole lot about his results. He's uh, his his um, as I just mentioned, his report is coming on May twenty fourth. Dying to see. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm, I mean uh, because he gave me the date of May May twenty fourth. Go ahead and put that on the agenda for for next meeting, Clem. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll yeah. present it in the next meeting, and I'll get it to everybody in advance so we all have yeah. a chance to digest it. And, was he here by himself, or? Oh, he came with his wife, and uh, but j j just himself, and uh, he spent half the day on the golf course, and um, he was out there on the day when the when sweeps guys were out there, so everybody was very interested. I had a lot of people banging on my door, what's that guy doing out there? <laughs> but um, um, no, he, he you know, it, it's really nice that, um, that uh, he has such a good background with the golf course. I mean, he, he, if you didn't know, he took over. Um, Jeffrey Cornish, who designed the golf course, Mark Mundrum has taken over, it worked with Mr. Cornish and has yeah. taken over his practice. So when he goes back to the, um, uh, to the office, he's got all of the original plans. I mean, he's, he's got everything for Cranberry Valley. He did, our, he did our driving range. He's done our master plan for golf carts. He's done our bunker. Tees. Tees, yeah. So yeah. what was he doing, going hole by hole, looking at all tee boxes? Yeah. And, and he was measuring, or yep. So he, so he, he he took measurements, and um, what he's trying, what he's doing, he's he's going to make a recommendation based on our. What the, the big difference was make a recommendation based on our existing tee boxes, where where each uh, each um, marker should be. And then and then uh, the process, as I've outlined here before, we'll take we'll take the results of his um, of his report, and I'm sure that, that I'm sure he'll recommend changes. I'm sure he won't just say, now nah, your card's good. I'm, I'm sure he'll have some recommended changes. And um, we'll take those uh, to um, Mass Golf and say, um, you know, we, we have changes to our tee sets that are over 100 yards. You know, 100 yards is, is the big yep. um, line of demarcation for them that within 100 yards, uh, um, uh, any changes within 100 yards of the tee set does not require re-rating. But, we'll, we'll, you know, when he does measure these tees, it'll, it'll instigate a re-rating. That's a pretty big... Missing 100 yards. Is, is yeah, for, right? for the whole, for for the whole um, 18 holes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 100 yards a hole. Yeah, no, not 100, 100 yards. 100, 100 for the <laughs> entire 18. Yeah. Folks, another thing too. Uh, I was just looking at the calendar. This is the year uh, again, and th there may be some merit, or there may be some overflow of uh, the USGA uh, coming again uh, this year. I don't think. You've been involved before, Carol, but uh, this is the year that they will be coming. And uh, uh, I had talked to Roman. He's going to secure a date for us. So, uh, you know, it, it's not just agronomy services, but uh, general USGA services it, as a total package. It's, it's just a very, very uh, well-spent dollar. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll let you know when a date has been secured. Yeah, perfect, perfect.
Okay. Uh, Could I possibly bring up something? Could I? Well, uh, or is this not a time to do that? Um, can, we, can we get to the... Go ahead. I just do your thing. I'd rather get uh, through the agenda. And That's then, fine. How's it? I'll okay. wait till the end. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, thanks. Uh, under new business, and this was so, somewhat of a stretch, but because of the recognition uh, that uh, SMGA gave to uh, one of our former uh, uh, committee members, I, I thought it was significant. So, Roman? Yeah. Yeah, so we had, um, we had this Military Golf Association event at Cranberry Valley yesterday, and uh, they chose uh, to honor uh, Tom Johnson from the Golf Committee because he would, he'd become such a friend to their organization, and he was so instrumental in making the connection with the yeah. Military Golf Association. They had um, uh, Tom's wife and, and um, his, his widow and his, uh, his sons out to um, play in the tournament yesterday, have lunch with him after, and they presented this wonderful award to him, which was then presented back to Cranberry Valley um, to post in our uh, clubhouse. This nice. Very nice. So we'll post this in the clubhouse. Oh, oh that is great. That yeah, is fantastic. really nice. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and they are such a just happy, respectful group of veterans. If anybody was at the golf course yesterday, they, they come out and decorate the place so wonderfully. Yeah. Um, the the uh, I, I put all the pictures on social media on our Facebook page, um, but they, they show up at like 6.30 in the morning and bang stakes in the ground and hang service flags. All the, the bag drop was decorated with all the service flags, and they put big posters up at the starter house um, about the SMGA. It was really, really, really well done. I hate to make it run. Could you show the guys on, oh, the, I'm sorry. on the camera? Yep. Uh, and Roman, while you're doing that, uh, how many participants? Uh, 40 veterans. Wow. Wow. And how would that compare to uh, like the year before? Oh, very nice. Isn't that cool? And I'll show you, I'll show you right here. It's got, it's got a dedication to Tom. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. I would say that that active involvement, it, it's increased some. Oh, yeah, it has. Yeah. Yep, so they, they, they um, brought out. Um, gosh, the first the first few years they had over 20 veterans or so, but this was their largest. And um, and Jerry Shanahan, who who uh, runs the organization of uh, SMGA of New England, um, said this was their favorite event of the year. They they run about 20 events a year, and they say this is hands down uh, the favorite one everybody wants to play in. Fabulous, fabulous. Okay, thanks so much. Any questions? Okay. Um, and under old business. Uh, I, I put together a little worksheet, folks, uh, and I tried to recognize <coughs> everybody that's been participating and uh, adding information. Uh, uh, Carol, as you know, sent, sent forward uh, some criteria or guidelines as far as a vision statements concerned. And, uh, you know, as we said in the closing of our last meeting, uh, brevity is the operative, uh, I, I guess, uh, guideline, if you will, and uh, and then uh, uh, Martha Duffy had uh, uh, sub. A member of the public speaking. Yeah. yeah. I think that was David Wilson, wasn't it? Who? Yeah. D Dave, we're in the middle of the agenda of the meeting, so. Uh, well, my, my phone is not supposed to be on side. That's the phone. I'll shut that off here. Okay. Um, What's that? I had a live mic and you didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, back to uh, our vision statement. Uh, Martha uh, uh, communicated to me, uh, uh, you know, her comment, and that's the first one there. Cranberry Valley Golf Course will always strive to be one of the most desirable public golf courses on Cape Cod in terms of golf course, quality of service, and friendly culture. Uh, the next one uh, was submitted by Paul White. Cranberry Valley is dedicated to consistently providing exceptional golf experience on Cape Cod. 
uh, and uh, the last uh, two, uh, the, there were two uh, concepts here that uh, John Crook uh, supplied that uh, you know I, I think you've reviewed before. Uh, CV delivers a superior playing experience for players of all abilities and age, destination where members of the community and visitors are welcome to learn, improve, enjoy golf on a superior golf course, and to provide opportunities for the development of the game with junior golfers. And much more abbreviated, the second one, to create a superior nonprofit golf operation that emphasizes inclusivity, uh, community outreach, junior golf development, investment in the golf course and infrastructure. So uh, I, I would turn it over to the people that, uh, you know, submitted these. Uh, are, are there any final edits? Uh, Paul, uh, I, I'm going to go to Martha first and then Paul and then uh, uh, John. Martha? No. Okay. Uh, Paul, anything? Uh, to add or subtract? No, I, no I, I, I really tried to keep it as taut and as concise as possible. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I don't have any, uh, you know, particular uh, uh, concern if folks want to make any suggestions. But I wanted to keep this as short as possible. I thought that kind of embraced uh, a goal. I think, I think we have to be careful not to have the vision statement be confused with the mission statement. I think sometimes the longer it gets, it tends to move in that direction. But look, th this is going to be done by consensus, I would hope. So yeah. I'm agreeable to whatever the committee wants to do. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Uh, and, I th and I think another goal for the committee is to uh, give or turn over to Roman something that he can use uh, as, a, as a marketing vehicle. Uh, and, you know, we can revisit this uh, you know, year to year if we have to. Uh, it's kind of a living document. Uh, okay, uh, uh, John. Roman also proposed a yeah, I statement. Yeah, Roman's was actually pretty good. I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 um, I thought it was really good. You know, <laughs> I did too, but I couldn't too. remember it exactly really what it had, was. I remember it, um, it had three things. It yeah, was to, it was to a learn big, to play and to it was based on the marketing um, thing we do at the um, at the golf shows, and it was um, it was uh, learn, play, enjoy. So based on I use those three words in a sentence. So Cranberry Valley is the best place to learn, play, and enjoy golf on Cape, uh, some version of that. I think I said, probably said it better. <laughs> okay. Cranberry Valley is the best place. Um, like I could word that better, I guess. You know, um, I'm not, I'm not sure I like that more than, than these examples. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, John, back to you. Uh, any other comments? Okay, okay, so everybody's in agreement there. John's graciously eliminating <laughs> C. I designated that, guys, uh, when I sent you that email, I, that's designated as number one. <clears throat> okay. And not that it's any better because I don't think it is but I also submitted one that wasn't included oh I'm but that that's a, that's perfectly okay but I think we just need to when people where did I miss that where? it was in my oh letter. you know so I read over but it but it begs the question Paul wrote to all of us and I wasn't sure whether I could even do that under our yeah I know so, sunshine. so what are we able to do do we just go to you and then you you submit things or what yeah I, I think that's a better that gives us a better fallback position Carol you know if somebody pushed back and said oh you're doing things you know behind the scenes and it's not open to the public so uh, as awkward as it is I think that's the best way to proceed especially based on what was going on with the finance committee? 
So, yeah. you know, uh, well, folks, if there's no more discussion, uh, Yeah. This is our public discussion, for sure. Right. I mean, we were just asked to kind of be prepared to do something, and then I think all of us submitted ideas with, you know, and I appreciate Carol focusing us on, you know, the vision statement should be the following things, and I think that's very helpful to look at that, and I, I, I'm grateful that she did that. Uh, and I think this gives us a chance to just say, okay, how do we want to move forward? I mean, this, this is the discussion now. We're not... Right. We made no decisions whatsoever. Okay. Well, uh, if if everybody's comfortable, I mean, we can vote on it, or, or how would you like to proceed? If we picked, uh, if we pick two by vote, and then uh, you know, just subtract it till we got to a majority of opinion. Or if we all. <clears throat> personally recommended one over the others and then we all come to some sort of consensus okay I fine mean, I I personally um, I like the uh, I think it's short and I think it brings <coughs> out what we're trying to project at Cranberry yeah and uh, I feel very comfortable with that with what one to be. Martha, I do too. Jack, could you live with that? Yeah, I like B, except that I'd like committed rather than dedicated. I just think committed is a stronger verb, but that's, I'm not going to nitpick over that. Paul, would you be amenable to that, committed? Absolutely. Okay. Thank I like you that. that Thank you, Jack. <laughs> John, to you. It's fine. Okay. We seem to have consensus. And so Steve? I, and, and so I, I, I think B is great also, and I also like Martha's with yeah. a little tweak, tweaking of a, a word or two. Okay. Uh, Steve, to you. Okay, I, I think we've got a consensus within the group. Uh, B. I like your committed. To be or not to be. <laughs> uh, that is our uh, vision statement. Uh, Cranberry Valley is committed to consistently providing an exceptional golf experience on Cape Cod. And folks, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as I said, you know, we can live with it and uh, we can revisit that. Just like our mission statement, uh, you know, to a point John made a couple of meetings ago, uh, we can look at that as well as very importantly, and I was thinking about this, John, the strategic plan uh, is something that, you know, I, I, I think perhaps, Carol, in the context of an additional meeting, strategic plan is something that we uh, really want to look at. Uh, I mentioned today to Roman, uh, you know, it's not a personal thing, but something that I brought up before and I think everybody was sensitive to. Uh, I don't know what triggered this, but uh, it might have been the fact that we lost electricity in Puerto Rico for three days straight. I really would like to see, well, they had a huge fire at some kind of, which is not, it is Puerto Rico, so it is what it is. But uh, I said to Roman, I really, I, I think it's incumbent you know, within the capital plan, we talked about generation, generation backup, uh, which, you know, at the library, of course, they have it. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I would hate to see us on a July 4th weekend or some big weekend, you know, lose that kind of capability. I know they can bring in portable stuff, but uh, I, I think we deserve better. But that's for a discussion at another time. Uh, Martha, to you. You wanted to bring up. Can I? <laughs> um, I really don't hey, want to bring this up. <laughs> hey, um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't mean to interrupt you. Um, they're asking for a vote on the mission statement. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll make it formal, Paul, uh, in the form of a motion uh, to approve uh, the vision statement uh, as amended uh, without discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so now I can bring out my issue. <laughs> is Correct. It, is, it, is, it a fan, is it delicate enough? Where? Yeah, it's delicate okay. enough. Um, and I'm not going to elaborate since Tuesday is women's leave day. Okay. And since I feel that, like Carolyn, I represent the women on the... Certainly. Okay. <clears throat> there was a number of observations, and I don't want it to get into pictures and drawings and the portable bathrooms. Okay. And the portable bathrooms, and I didn't know this, do not have urinals. And they feel, because of what they've observed, that we need to have portable bathrooms with urinals. We, um, yeah, so on a different, to tack this from a different side of things, we, we've been um, challenged with the portable bathroom on the fourth hole. That one in particular, um, it's uh, because it, it's such a large unit. So, so we went for the handicap version, which is right. very large. Right. It's got a flimsy kind of um, uh, floor in it that 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 settles, and so anytime it rains, what any any water at all puddles in there, and um, I've gotten a lot of pictures. And, uh, and then the first people walk in with dirty golf shoes, and all of a sudden now you have brown water on the floor of a porta potty, which is not attractive look. So, um, you know, we, I mean, so we've tried a number of things. We, we've drilled holes in the bottom of it so it drains better. We've repositioned it. We've tried putting it up on blocks. I mean, so we, we've tried a number of things. We still, we're still working on other items about um, putting a urinal in. I'm not, I don't know. I, I could look into it if that was um, I think, available. I think it's imperative. At Blue Rock, my go-to place, sorry, Roman, they have that kind of a unit, as I remember. And uh, I, I would really, that's something that I have pictures deserve. of it in my phone. I've got so. pictures. Don't worry. Yeah. No, but I mean a Blue Rock. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but, but the... Uh, but am right. I correct that, that that's the type of unit? It, that's, it and when they said, too. when you said you were going to upgrade, I just took it for granted that I don't know much about them, but I mean, I figured that was the one that you were going to get. There are, the, the, you know, the, so we got the, we, we got the handicap accessible larger unit, yeah. and, the, and the idea was that, that I don't know, apparently it's not, it's not yeah. what the lady wanted. <laughs> Um, but um, I, well, I can feel I'm, I'm not going to go <laughs> describing what they think, yeah. but right. I'm just making it. The one, I mean, the one no. thing I would say, and, and it's got to be the unit because it, I mean, before any ladies went out and say it was professionally cleaned by the company, and then our own gander goes out after they do and sweeps it out and makes sure there's no water in it. So, I mean, the employee efforts are there. I, I, it may just not be the product that. Yeah, that yeah. Is it's on. also tilted on the side. And so then leading up to it is a sea of mud. So right. you can't even get in there without getting it muddy. Yeah. And then, as you said, it, then it looks really awful yeah. because then water gets into it. And I went into it, and I, Martha didn't, but I went into it after the fireman tournament. And I said, ooh, it's, this is not a good thing. <laughs> um, well, we just don't want it to get out of control. I mean, well, I yeah, it's did, early, it's early it did in, last yeah. year. It's early enough, year, enough in the yeah, season where that's, we yeah, can take care of some it. Th some things you can't fix. I think this is a very fixable. I'll see what's available. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what, what, our, what, our, what we ordered yeah. today, um, we, I and our maintenance crew go out because, again, we had a discussion with some ladies that played today, 
and we were going to get mats in there, like you know, so that there's no, no moisture ever comes up, yeah. and, and so that the surface in there is always above any moisture. It's not only that; yeah. it's the odor, the yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, and Carol, uh, again, back to Blue Rock. I, I'm pretty sure because it's this would be simple, Roman. A half yard of crushed stone. Yeah. To, you know. I think front, we had, we had a, front car, the a carp, part of a carpet, and then mm. and so it was mud, the carpet, and then the porta potty. Well, you've seen. Yeah. Well, you probably saw it was. We, we've been trying to work this thing out. So, sure. so you saw it readjusted. The yes. positioning readjusted so that it would drain, so so that it wouldn't retain water. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I got I got that <laughs> point. Okay. But we're, we're we'll work on that one. Yeah. Okay. Needs further. It, Needs further investigation. Good. We'll leave it at that. Uh, is there any other business to bring before the committee? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Okay. okay. Moved by Martha Duffy. Are we going to have a uh, separate meeting for the uh, discussion on the strategic plan? Or how are we going to do Yes. That? Yeah. That Carol's going to give me a couple of dates. Uh, and then I'll or, I'll post it. Or you guys could input into dates coming up. Yeah. Would be on Tuesday. I think Tuesday works well for people. Does it? I mean, with. Would we do it before our next meeting? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I, with your MGA commitments, uh, does Tuesday work for you? I have to look at the Whatever. calendar. Okay. Okay. All right. This time, uh, yeah. I, th I, th I think that Paul, I'd have to double check, but I think that's the date that I had. Twenty first. Yeah, it's the twenty first. Okay. Yeah, Steve. I can't hear. Oh. He's asking about um, yeah. what the timetable will be for getting uh, members of the committee to help with an RFP. Steve, what uh, as from the as far as the group's concerned, why don't you get back to me within within a week, and uh, you know I'll discuss it with you, and and you can take take it forward. Okay. I think if you just said any any committee members with interest in being on the task force, yep. reach out to Clem yep. within a week. Yeah, thanks. Just send me an email. Sounds like he's in another country. I know, I know it. God. <laughs> hey, Mike, I think you have a hot mic. Look at him. Mike Surgeon? Yeah. yeah. There he goes. He turned yeah. his mic uh, Okay. Um, okay. So we're adjourned. We're adjourned. Okay. Okay.